Asia. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lexicon of which I'm maybe not, not no, so proficient. No problem. Let's not question about the, 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 the basic components. Let's just question about our existence in the first place. Because I think that is what everyone would question themselves. Why are we here? We must have a purpose in our life. Is the fact that jumping the, to, so, so to a different issue now. Yeah, because I think, in my opinion, when you're using the reductionist approach, you're not treating us as though we're humans. Because at the end of the day, we are humans, right? We have feelings. If you are reducing to atoms and elements, then what's the difference between you and the chocolate bunny? Well, we've, we've touched on one difference, which is the, the consciousness the, issue. Exactly. So what I'm saying to you is this. I think at this moment in time, it's not even, it's not even relevant to talk about the basic constituents. Rather, we should question about our own existence. Why do we exist? So, so the reason why th that particular issue is important, that particular difference between me and the chocolate bunny, as you put it, is important, is because the chocolate bunny cannot, by any measurable, in, in any measurable way, experience suffering. For example, okay, I can, and therefore there is a certain level of utility yeah. to me valuing myself over something that that doesn't value itself. Exactly. So, why do you value your life? Because I have the potential to suffer and not yeah. suffering is much more appealing to me than suffering. And where'd you get your life from? Um, Who gave you life? Are, are we gonna, I, I feel- I'm No, not, no, no, I'm, I'm being, I'm being not, very honest with you. It's not my first rodeo, so no, I understand fine, fine. that we're probably gonna go down the infinite regress. No, not even, not even infinite regress, not even infinite regress. As far as I'm aware- I, I don't entertain can... infinite regress arguments. I don't entertain those arguments. Okay. So, because these are philosophical arguments which I don't entertain. What I'm saying, the basic thing is this, you have a beginning, I have a beginning. If something has a beginning, right, we have to question ourselves why are we here in the first place. That's, that's the first question. I have a beginning question. in the sense yeah. that me as an individual, right. me as a person separate from you has right. a beginning. Okay. But the constituents, and I know uh, you, you wanted to redirect us from considering ourselves in terms of atoms and subatomic particles. Yeah. But I'm saying the existence of those and the origin of those is so why don't we question about the origin of our existence? So I'm saying it's unclear still whether there is an origin. But you must have an origin because you just said you have a beginning. No, I'm saying me as, a, as an individual has a beginning. No, but I'm, that, saying, yeah. but I'm saying that, that could just be as a result of the order in which those sub, subatomic particles have but again, what, But again, what you're doing is you're now, you're now adopting what you call a reductionist approach. Which is you're now, you're now treating yourself as though you're just an element. You're just made up of atoms and elements. I'm but you're more than no, that. I, I, you're more than that. I'm more than that because of how, you how those things have aligned themselves. But with all due respect, you, should, you really shouldn't degrade yourself like that. Because the thing is, you have feelings of love, you have feelings of compassion, which how do subatomic articles able to uh, subatomic particles? Exactly. Sure. So now the question is, why, why, why do we have short life? Why don't we live here forever? If, we, if you believe that the universe always began, I'm not saying you do, I don't believe but there's a possibility. Let's say you have a possibility, then why don't we live forever then? Why do we have to die? If the universe is supposed to be there forever, why do everyone in the universe die? That means we have a purpose. Just like, for example, you have an examination, you have a test. I'll, I'll explain that. All right. Go, um, go on. I don't, so I don't necessarily believe that the universe will live forever in its current form. Okay. And I, I think, for example, what scientists call the singularity from which Thank came the Big Bang. Yeah. Was, Assalamu alaikum. Was Wa alaikum as Happy Mother's Day, oh, please. Okay. To all the mothers in the world. No, I love my mother every day. Thank every you very much. Day. Mums are the best. All Mums day, are the best. Thank you. Day. Thank you. Yeah. And a special tribute to Mrs. Andrea Kelly sure. today. I'm making today a special tribute to Mrs. Andrea Kelly. Okay. Who brought for free, free beautiful, God bless children. That's good yeah. to hear. And um, this morning, I was shocked to open my YouTube to listen to a Christian channel called HN News, okay. slandering Mrs. Andrea Kelly and blaming her for everything. <laughs> I couldn't okay. even believe it. They even called her a traitor. Cool. So I said, how dare you, a Christian, sure. a based organization on Mother's Day. Sure, sure. Yeah? Remember, Andrea bought for three beautiful children for Mr. R. Kelly. Yeah? Sure, sure, sure. How dare you slander her, Christian, uh, especially on Mother's Day? Absolutely. Hey, come I, on. I wouldn't blame anybody. I wouldn't blame, yeah, exactly. exactly. She, she, she shouldn't get no blame at all, sure. anyway. But we, we, we try to be fair. We say the man and the woman equally, they are both uh, responsible. Sure. Thank yeah? you very much. Thank you very much. Everybody should be treated justly, justly. according to their exactly. actions. But when, when we come in to talk about relationships, you can't just blame the woman. 
Oh. Anyone who's to be blamed should be... Should be blamed. blamed. <laughs> you are blaming for men. <laughs> exactly. And the women, they have a lot of emotion. Thank so you the much. mainstream media play up on the, the, the emotion. Sure, now, sure. if you know the animals, like a lion, yeah. the lion, when the lion is under attack, the lioness, she doesn't want to protect the lion. She's the as a first protocol. Her first protocol is to run and protect her cubs. Sure, 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 sure. Because if she wants to protect the husband and leave the, the cubs exposed and open and at risk of attack, you understand? So a natural, naturally, she wants to protect her cubs first. Yeah? Sure, sure. So you cannot blame her and say she's a traitor because she left the husband. She has to protect her children first. Cool. That's the nature. I agree. I agree. And Thank when you. the man is under Thank attack, you yeah? When the man is under attack, yeah, it ultimately affects the children, yeah. yeah. So the mom yeah. has to protect the children, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Sorry, when the madam, he's just calling you. He's no, just calling. No, I'm not finished. So do you understand me? Yes. Yeah, sure. Especially by the media. Yeah. When the man is under attack by the media, the mainstream media, the the mother has to protect the children. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very so much. So love them, your mothers. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Remember what they went through. Absolutely. Yeah. They every day. Just wake up and say, oh, oh, oh. Every day. Yeah? So every day. They go through a lot. Cool. Thank you very much, yeah? sister. Many Thank you very much. Keep silent. Mm -hmm. Ah, you see? Indeed, indeed. Thank you very much, sister. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Where were we? Yeah, where were we? Yeah, the, okay, this one said, okay, fine. Next first question. You, you're not sure, you're not convinced if there is a creator in the first if, place, if I right? Can just, uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I just remember where we were. Yeah, sure, um, sure. So, you, you suggested that I might think um, that the universe will, like I, why we don't, you asked why we don't live forever, if yeah. the universe is going to live forever. Yeah. But I don't necessarily agree that the universe is going to remain in its current form forever. I mean, we, we already know that it's fluctuating, at least the observable universe is fluctuating, is expanding, right? Um, so why would I assume that I will live, stay in the same form forever? I, I might die as an individual, but again, my base com constituents will continue. No, no, no. See, if I, if I get the dictionary out of the o Oxford Dictionary, what the universe is, you would sort of appreciate where I'm coming from. Because the universe doesn't just mean the cosmos, the universe is also us. We're part of the universe. Yeah, so if if so if the universe was always there, but the universe uh, changes, right? Exactly. So how can how can something that always existed go through changes? Why not? Because infinity, by definition, means it's impossible to measure. Do you believe? Well, when you say measure, what what constitutes change? What constitutes change? Series of events. Like what if your if your from mood H, changes? Can from you X it? from X to Y. If your mood changes, can you measure it? If you measure, so you're talking about a qualitative. Uh, qualitative traits, but you can quantitatively measure the the universe. No, you can't. You can't. You can only measure. You can only estimate a measurement for the observable universe. But that's what I'm saying. So if who's you can, say, but if you can, but who's to say that's the extent of the universe? But that is, by definition, that's what infinity means. That is impossible to measure. But if we, if I can, but I'm saying you. Yeah. People claim to measure the observable universe. Okay. But no one, I don't believe anyone credibly claims to measure the universe. The universe is made up of mathematics, that's the language. The language of physics is mathematics. So, all, all of existence? All of existence. So I'm saying, not, I don't think anyone credibly claims to be able to measure all of existence. When you apply are mathematics, you, you when, you, when you apply mathematics into the universe, that's physics. Are, are you saying it's infinite? No, I'm not saying it's infinite. Okay. What I'm no, saying is, what I'm okay. saying, what I'm, say, what I'm saying... I'm to make sure exactly, that, that we exactly. don't know. No, what I'm yeah? saying... I'm saying we don't know. No, no, no. We know I'm for saying sure. Can you, you measure, measure a region yeah, I'm, I'm of saying, something which is infinite? No, 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 what I'm saying is, I'm saying, oh, yeah. if you can measure any part of it, if you can measure from here to there, then that's not infinite. Then it can't oh be infinite. God. You mean, if you can measure a part of it, mm -hmm. then it can't be infinite. Can't be infinite. It's finite because How it has a starting and it has a. How end. many of you are there? In terms of what we understand to be. No, human you, beings. You, you, you as this person. Or how many of people of my. No, you or... as this person standing in front of me. How many? One. Yeah. If there's only one, then it can't be an infinite universe. 
if it was an infinite universe, there'll be an infinite number of you. So exactly. I think, but I think what we're doing, we're falling into the trap of thinking that because we already have parameters for what makes what differs me from you in the sense of what makes us separate. No, 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 we're not talking about that. We're just saying the fact that the unit that what you're saying is this possibility that the universe always existed. If the universe always existed, how come how come there's not infinity in the real world? If I if I was to ask you how many bananas are there, if there's infinite number of bananas, and I subtract two, how many bananas? I understand what I understand that what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm saying you can but you can claim the problem is for me to respond to that, I will have to speak specifically to the person as in to you from your um, religious tradition. That's no, it's saying. nothing to do with religion. It's just the fact that no, in the sense that yeah. what you're the claim you're making contradicts yeah. some of the precepts of your own belief. No, not necessarily, because what I believe the universe has a beginning. I believe that the originator of the heavens and the earth is the creator. Example, if I say, for example, that you're, if I was to make the claim that your scripture um, attributes to your creator a finite number of attributes, okay, then finite number of attributes, a finite okay. number of attributes or okay. characteristics or okay. even what you will claim is a figurative in a, is in a figurative sense lump, number of limbs or so on. Number of limbs of for, who? For us, to met, for us, for example, to count the number of limbs a deity has, would, no, we don't be believe the in same that. as saying, Nobody. if you subtract two bananas from infinite, yeah. infinite bananas, how many bananas? Yes, it? yes. It would be the same thing. No, see, this is the reason why I believe that we should go by the foundation first, which is the first to, to tell you who we believe to be the creator. That's very, very important. That's why. That's what I'm saying. I'm, so, I'm so, referring so, to the description of your creator. Okay, but okay. so what do you know about the description of our creator? So, Okay, this is only uh, it, it's helpful that you're here because you can correct me from that. Absolutely fine. So, first of all, what do you reject? What kind of God do you reject? It's not that, it's not that I reject necessarily. Okay, yeah, right. that, that's a whole other conversation. But I, I, I reject first of all the idea that I can claim I know the answers to questions which are which are seemingly unanswerable. So I don't claim to know, and it would it would seem disingenuous to me for you to claim to know that you're your religious tradition is true okay. when you are not expected to know. But we're not talking about religion right now. We're just talking about whether there is the creator or not behind the universe. Because religion comes with revelation. I, so I, we're not, I, so I we're wouldn't not, claim to know one way or the other. Okay, so let me okay, so let me define to you who we believe to be the creator, right? And let's see if that makes sense to you, right? Let's see. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the conversation where, and I guess I, I fall into the trap of wanting to, of like touching on religion. But hang on, I'm making a positive. You're, you're, you're yeah. right in the sense that yeah. you, just dealing with the issue of the creator outside of any religion is probably the right way to do it. That's what I'm doing. I so I'm not, so I'm not postulating that Islam is true just because I can, I can prove to you the existence of the creator. Right. But what I'm saying, in order for me to even talk about Islam to you, I first, I first need to tell you who the creator is. I don't reject, I don't reject the idea of a creator. But you're just not, you just don't I'm know. Just not, I don't know and I'm so not let convinced me, one way or the other. Okay, so let me inform you who we believe to be the creator. And then from then on, we can, okay. then you can say whether you're not sure about it, right? Okay, okay. so but we say, yeah. I, I just want to preface this. Sure. And I, I mentioned it earlier, coming to a, to a place like this, yeah. Uh, it's a platform for both the apologetics and of course. the polemics. Of course. So I've been exposed to all sides okay. of the claims you're, you may be okay, sure. about to make. Sure. But however, I do not want to appear to represent the counter arguments. They're not my arguments necessarily. However, I, I'm aware of their existence and okay. they play a part in my thinking. I appreciate you making that disclaimer. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, that's, abs that's absolutely so fine. If, that's absolutely fine. If I challenge you, your claims. More than welcome I'm to challenge. Play, I'm playing devil's advocate because I think no, no, the only I want, way to no, no, establish but, the truth no, of the claim I'm, is to challenge it. No, but, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. But then, but then I want you to be honest. Of course. Listen, I've got a long way to go. So okay. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Take care, man. Fine. Take care. The appropriate uh, park. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Take care. It's not. So. So so okay so, since I, I don't know how long you've been coming to Speaker's Corner. How, how long have you come here? Uh, Maybe for a year before the, the for a year. Uh, lockdown. Okay. But and has Muslims have you spoken to Muslims before? Like, yeah. Okay. And have they explained to you who who we believe to be Allah? Just to one extent or another. Yeah. So what have you heard so far? Because the thing is, I want to see if you know who Allah is first of all, because probably 
it's a wasting time if I'm explaining to you who Allah is, right? So what have you heard from the Muslims I mean, that I mean, they... Bearing in mind that the conversation is being recorded, I don't think it's going to be wasted if you give some of the basic... Pre- okay, fine. So we... Okay, so first of all... There'll be a lot yeah. of people who can gather some, gain sure. something from Sure. That. So we, we say that the defini- we have something called the definition of Allah. That Allah defines for himself who he is, right? And it's in the Quran, right? So we believe that the revelation comes from Allah. And he explained to himself who he is. And this is the... And Islam came here to propagate the message of Tawheed, the oneness of God. That is, that is the foundation of, uh, of the faith. That the first call of the prophets and messengers is to preach people to worship none but the Creator and not to associate partners with Him. Now, Almighty God, who we believe to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a, a short chapter, short surah called Surah Al-Ikhlas, which is 112 chapter. Right? And every Muslim from childhood to adulthood memorized. And it goes like this: "Aud bilahi min al-shaytan al-jinn, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the one and absolute, indivisible. Meaning that he's not into parts, he's not into divine entities, right? He's one and absolute. Allah hu samad. Allah, the independent, the self-sufficient. Meaning that all of his creation depends upon him, but he does not depend upon his creation for his existence. He does not. He does not require to eat. He does not require to drink. Rather, we require to eat and drink from the one who provided us." That's what we say. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Meaning that Allah does not have a lineage. Because if he has a lineage, then he's not God. Because that means he has a beginning and an end. And if Allah has parents, that means his parents are superior to him. How can his parents be superior to God? How can Allah father children? Right? So Allah does not have a lineage. And then walam yakullu kufan ahad. There is nothing comparable unto him. So let me just summarize from that particular surah. And I'll condense it. Allah is basically the one and only independent, self-sufficient entity that always existed in eternity and that particular entity cannot be compared to anything else in existence. Now based upon, based upon that definition of Allah, do you have any issues or you're not convinced? Convinced of? Convinced of this deity that we, that we believe to be the creator. So again, I'm only ref- I'm really referring to some of the arguments I've heard against some of these claims. Okay, sure, sure. So, for example, where it comes where it comes to um, the, the attributes and his dependency on his creation. No, he's not dependent upon his creation. No, no. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I mean, the the, the challenging argument okay. suggested that there is an element of dependency where it comes to some of those attributes because some of those attributes are transactional in nature ah, and okay. I, I think this, this happened only like no, a week no or problem. Two ago, no right? problem, I can address that, no problem. Um, no problem. But I, I, I don't know if within that, I don't remember within that convers- that video that I watched yeah, yeah, whether yeah. you were given a fair opportunity to address Oh, you watched claims. me? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I think, I, I think you have... I, I probably have. With Bob, right? Yeah, with Bob the movie, yeah. Um, okay, I okay. Think it, I think it was on that topic. Yeah, it was, it right? was. So, his... And again, I'm not saying I agree with him. No problem, but I'm no saying problem. It's, it's food for thought for the agnostic... Absolutely. Or for the... For the, for the Muslims For well. the neutral. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Course for the, of course, it is an opportunity to affirm yeah. their, their beliefs. So, um, the idea that certain attributes mm. are transactional in nature and therefore require a recipri- recipient okay. Okay. for them to be logically mm. um, viable mm. is something that, that provoked sure, sure. Uh, thought in me. Um, so I'll be interested no to hear, to hear no problem. your views on that. No problem. So let's first define and what... I'm, and, I'm, and I'm keeping it locked into what, what no, you've already given as an No problem, Cyrus. You, you should be very honest with me and I, I want you to challenge me. Sure, sure. And, I, and, and I can challenge you, but in a, in a very respectful manner, because sure. I can see in many in previous discussions, people get a bit heated up and it doesn't go away. But we're having a good, respected discussion, right? Long so, may it continue. Long may it continue, <laughs> exactly. So you spoke about the, the attributes, that there's some sort of transactional and therefore it, 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 it postulates that the, that the creator is dependent upon the object for his attribute. Now, what we say is we first need to define what is attribute by definition. Mm-hmm. What do we mean by attribute? So what do you understand by the word attribute? 
because we cannot use terms and, and, and phrases unless we know what we're saying. Uh, so how I would understand attribute, and you, you may pull out the Oxford definition, but yeah. I, I would uh, infer from that um, a, a trait which is either intrinsic or adopted. No. Attribute by definition means inherent characteristics. But can something become inherent? Inherent means it, it's always in you. This is what we say. So you cannot so you cannot attribute the object unless the object exists first. There has to be the existence first, then you then you put the attributes. But it comes with it. So for example, for example. I'm going to challenge you on that. Yeah, no problem, no, pro no problem, no problem. When we say, so we say that Allah's attributes are not makhluk, they're not created. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already had these attributes in Him. Mm -hmm. Now, since Almighty God, since He always existed, therefore all of His attributes existed. Okay, for example, for you mentioned about the transaction, right? How can you call Him the creator if He hasn't created yet, right? Well, I think, I think one, of the, one of the examples that was used was, uh, merciful. How, how can you be cons how can you be Correct. merciful unless Correct. you have yeah. uh, an, an object to, cool. uh, towards which to no problem to transmit your mercy. no problem. So the Islamic scholars they they, they, they explain this very well. So we have something called dhatiya and fa'liya. Dhatiya meaning his essence and fa'liya meaning the action. So some of his attributes does not necessarily mean it needs to be manifested. And some of his attributes he true exactly essential. And some of his attributes he can manifest it. So for example, his attribute of, of being the creator, just because he doesn't create, that doesn't necessarily mean that he was never the creator. Because he has the capacity and the ability to create. He doesn't need to create to show that he's the creator. So let me ask you a question then. Yeah? I feel like potentially that raises a, a problem where you say it's essential. If he had not... What was the term you used where, where he, he, def he defined his own attributes? Is that what you said? Not so what the dhatiya, his essence, and then his fa'liya, which is his action. Earlier on, you said he, he defined his own attributes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he defines about himself. Right. Yeah. As With in, the attribute. So what does that mean? As in he, he reveals about himself? He reveals about himself. But those right. attributes, are they self defined or are they they're just there as timeless as he is? No, it's with him. All the time. Always. Always. That so, makes sense. The fact is, the fact is, you have the capacity to love. That's your essence. But just because you haven't shown your love, that doesn't mean that you don't have love in the first place. You do have it, but you just didn't choose to manifest it. But can I c consider myself loving until I've loved? But you, but 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 the attribute I is your potential. I may have the potential, ah. the capacity, but can I consider myself a lover okay. until I love? Okay, but can you love unless you have the capacity to love in the first place? And this is why attribute by different. Can you not different... learn to love? No, you can't learn how to love. Like for example. Um, I mean, it's an interesting... Ah, okay, but this is different because what we say Allah is not like us. His existence is not like our existence. But, Do you understand? I understand. So I, he, I know we'll always, even if I find like, yeah. even if I find a, the perfect analogy... Yeah. But why, but why it, does... will always come back to... Yeah. But it's not like us. But why does, Allah's, why does Allah need to manifest every attribute of His to His creation? Why can't it be just in, within His essence? Um, I understand the question you're asking, but, uh, before I forget. Yeah, sure. So, for example, where he's described as the most merciful. Correct. Could he have been any other way? As in, could he have decided himself to have been the something else? No, he has 99 names and attributes. But you, where you said he defined them. No, no, no. I'm saying what he what he attributes about himself. That he is all merciful, that he is a summer, that he is independent, he's self-sufficient, that he is one and absolutely is ahad, right? But all of his attributes, they're not makhluk, they're not created. It's always with him. And that is what attribute means by definition, is inherent characteristics. This is less of a challenge, it's just more of a, like a, sure. an academic question. Sure, sure. He is described as the most merciful. Correct, correct. Could he just have been, could he have equally been the least merciful? No. Why not? Because that defies his nature. But if he was the least merciful and never had, having never been the most merciful, would it change anything? For but you? but that's hypothetical now. No, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just. It's just a, uh, an additional, just a thought that popped into my mind. No, it's because not, it's not to do with no, the challenge no, to any of you. No, because because my creator defined the way how he that he defined. Now by altering his attributes and his characteristics, 
according to my opinion, you're altering the reality. What so, 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 is, so with all due respect, there are attributes, but there are names and attributes, commonly named attributes okay. that we know. There's more. I understand. We'll know more. So there are 99 yeah. names and attributes. Correct. That we know. That you know of. Yes. Yes. What I'm saying is, had they been different, and I know it's just hypothetical, but why not? Okay. Had they been different, would it make? Oh, okay. Before I get to that, sure. Does he have any attributes? that he has not yet manifested? No. Why does he need to manifest his attributes? No, I'm saying, does he have any that he has? You're saying he doesn't need to manifest them to no, have does, them innately in Yeah, him. yeah, exactly. So I'm saying, does he have any of examples of attributes that he's named, but has not exercised yet? Um, because the entirety of history has not played out. Okay. So what I mean is, the time for him to demonstrate let's say one of his attributes. I don't know because because when it comes to, okay so we have a scholar called Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah may Allah have mercy on him he explained the names and attributes of Allah in, in, in the best way he says when it comes to the ma'na when it comes to the description of Allah we understand the meaning of mercy we understand the meaning of love we understand the meaning of create of him being the creator but in terms of the haqiqah in terms of the reality of his attribute that only belongs to him so how the kafir how how he is infinitely merciful, how he creates infinitely, we don't know. But we affirm his Excellent. names and attributes. So whatever Allah himself negates about himself, we confirm that. Whatever the Prophet peace be upon negated about Allah, we negate that. Whatever Allah affirmed about himself, we affirm. And whatever the Prophet peace be upon him affirmed, we also affirm. And this is the this is the, the, the aqidah, this is the creed of the Salaf. So yeah? like over you know, over time I've heard people cite for example one of the attributes okay and then give an example as to how it was manifest so for example um, whatever it might be so somebody went through trials and tribulations but came out uh, unharmed okay this is one of the signs of the manifestation of the mercy of yes Allah, yes example. yes yes so so what I'm saying is there are numerous attributes yes. to which we can draw examples the whole point, the whole point of Allah revealing His names and attributes is to recognize. That's one of the right. reasons that we recognize His names and attributes. The very fact that He created the heavens and the earth, it's, it demonstrates that He is the Creator. But my next question to you is this: Does He need to create to demonstrate He's the Creator? Absolutely not, because He already had the capacity and He had the attribute, His inherent characteristics to create. For example, I think that's an yeah. arguable, so for arguable point. But I, I understand I, that. That's, yeah. But why does it? Okay. Approach. So in His hikmah, in it, look. First of all, we as Muslims, we should never ever go beyond the knowledge of Allah about Himself, His reality. We only affirm what Allah Himself mentioned about Himself and what the proper peace be upon it affirm. For example, we say Meaning Allah. Don't speculate we don't speculate, but, we, but but the, but the most crux of the issue is there must be the Creator, and that's all you need to recognize. That's all you need to recognize. Why should we know the reality of his, of, his, of how He is? That belongs to Him. We have been given little knowledge. And we're trying to go above to know who the creator is about his reality. No, this his ontological reality just belongs to him. But he revealed about his attributes that he is a summer, that he is self-sufficient. He doesn't require to be eat, he doesn't require to eat and drink like us, right? He's independent, meaning that he always existed. We as humans, we never existed. This whole creation here is a proof that, you know. It, it, did, it didn't always be. Like so, going back to my yeah. sort of world view, sure, sure. Like I'm not convinced necessarily, even if I was to accept, for example, the idea, which I don't, but the idea that a being brought reality into existence, I wouldn't have conviction in saying it did it intentionally necessarily, or even that it continued to exist once that was established. But it really doesn't matter anymore because the reason why I say this to you because if that makes sense to you the definition of Allah what we say is called the fitra the fitra meaning the natural inclination that it's aligned with you know natural inclination that hang on if that's the way how Allah himself described it makes sense it makes sense that he's not a man he's not Jesus he's not Muhammad then wouldn't you say not, that my yeah? natural inclination will also inform me as to whether the claims about the creator are true. Ah, that's it. But then you, that, then you uh, say uh, those, those can be... Ah, uh, no, that's the reason why we need revelation. We need guidance. Because but we believe... Then, because we believe... my natural yeah. inclination yeah. not lead me to... If it's true, would yeah. it not need... And if my natural inclination is implemented in me yes, by yes, God, yes, would yes. it then not make sense that I would naturally believe the claims? Ah, this is the reason why we say to you that every every human being is born in Dinah Fitr. 
Din al Fitr meaning the innate religion. That they accept that there is the, 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 there is a high supreme entity without any influence of external and internal factors from the society. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said. How do we so the prophet, verify that? Okay, so the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that every child is born in Din al Fitr, that every child is born to recognize that there is a supreme deity. Right, there is a supreme deity, but the society. But then but he started by what to. Means to how do we? How, by just saying there must there must have been above me that is responsible for taking control of everything. That how is. How do the, we know that all? all so, sorry, the, the, the all, was it all people are born that way? All people are born to to recognize that they submit to the will of someone who's higher than higher than us, but they don't they just don't recognize who he is. How but they you, just recognize that there is. That that's true? Ah, and that's why we need revelation. No, how that, do we verify that all human beings are born with that with that innate understanding? With that, because if you ask any child who created this, they point up. I mean, so, but they, but they, but they don't, I don't know. Ever asked any child yeah, yeah, yeah. Every question, uh, every child would know that. Every child would know. Go, I don't know. No, but okay, okay. But every child does. Every child would tell you that anything that comes to existence, there must be a creator. There must be. That is the natural inclination. But what happens is, as you grow up, you have been influenced by the society. That, that goes back to the very beginning of our conversation, yeah. where we, you were presupposing that everything has come in, has come in, even the base constituents of what makes our reality came into existence. Exactly. That's so that's presupposition. Right. But I'm not talking. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about God. I'm just talking about the fact that children have this innate nature to accept that something must be above me that is responsible for But isn't that everything. because a child is born dependent on its parents and therefore ah. it, it, it grows up That's, understanding... You just confirmed, you just confirmed what the Prophet peace be upon him said. This, yeah. is what he's, this is exactly what he's saying. I never claimed that he didn't say anything. But uh, no, but this it didn't is, make sense. No, but, he, the, but what you're saying is what the Prophet peace be upon him confirmed. Right. That he's saying that every child is born in an innate religion of accepting that... But why do you say religion? Okay, really, way of life. State of, state of state, state, state of yeah, state. Right. Yeah, dinner fitter, like, like uh, all, innate, innate way of only, life. Yeah, right. All human children, as in all human infants, are born that way. Yes, yes. But not all entities on earth. There are some entities on earth. No, we believe every entity here is a Muslim. The creation. Why? Because Muslim, by definition, means uh, that submits to the will of the Creator. Sorry. The very fact that this tree here submits to the will of the creator is following its, its, its nature, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a program. Sorry, but the, the point that I was making was all human beings are born dependent on their parents or on a parent or on yeah. another individual to, to yeah. raise them. What I'm saying yeah, is yeah. not all living things on earth are born that way. Okay, but so we're you're, not... You're, you're taking it another step and saying... No, no, I, no, no the but, the, the, but the, hadith, the hadith says every child. It's not, say, it's not say every living thing. No, no it's every every. I'm just child. Saying, not every living thing, but every every human child. Every human child. Now, what happened is because they depend upon the parents, they start then adopting the religion of their parents. They start worshiping fire. They but start what I mean becoming Jews. It's, it's no surprise to me that, first of all, I, I, I wouldn't agree with your claim that every child, if you ask them where did things come from, they point up. I don't I don't agree with that. I I wouldn't have answered that question. That well, way. Justin Barrett. He's a, he's, a, he's a professor at Cambridge University. Right. He conducted a study and he brought children without any external factors, without any external influence. And they all accept that there must be supreme deity. Well, hold on. They all, all accept those children it. were raised in families no, that no. had their own narrative? No, no, no. They weren't raised by their family. Independent. What do you mean Me independent? Like, meaning, meaning there's no external influence. They didn't learn. How old learn. were the children? They were in the influence. I'm not sure. Around five, six years old, I'm not sure. I've never had any external influence? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why they conducted the study. Justin Barrett, you can, you can research yourself, yeah, Justin Barrett. I would like to make a note of that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. If you think the only scenario in which you could create, you could like create control samples of children who have had no e external influence yes. would be if they were bred in captivity and were never given contact but, with but other, what I'm other human beings. But what I'm saying to you is that this is the natural state without any external influence but because of the society because of the nurture because of the environment it then ultimate it then altered their their understanding about god they start adopting the religion of their parents they start becoming a jew they, they start becoming christian that's the reason why when we say that a person accepts islam we don't call them a convert we call them a reaver because they're going back to the natural inclination and this is what islam means by definition it means you submit to the will of the one true god that i just spoke to you but as far as i know when I gave you the definition of Allah, I don't think you have any issue. 
you're, what you're doing is at, at this moment in time, I just think what you're doing is you're fighting against your, your natural instinct. No, it's, it's quite the opposite. You're trying to fight against my natural instinct. I, my natural instinct is that I'm not convinced. My no, you're not convinced of if, you're not convinced if this, whoever this creator is, communicated me. That I'm is not that even convinced that it still exists. I'm not convinced that if it existed, it still exists. If it existed, it knew it was creating us. Okay, do you exist? Yes. Do you exist? Yes. How do you know that? I think. But are you, but are you sure that, that you exist? Okay, so now you're going by the Greek Socrates. I don't know whoever quoted this right. But you know for sure that you exist. I'm saying, look, if we, if so, we so, agree so on my, a number of parameters but, as to what it called, right. if we agree as to what a no. number of if we agree to a number of parameters as to what existence is, and I would assume that based on the conventional parameters, you're, you're, you're asking me the question based on conventional parameters, then I'll say yes, I exist. No, I'm do just, I, I'm do I experience, do I believe I'm experiencing existence? Yes. No, I'm questioning, the, I'm not questioning about whether there's God or not, I'm just questioning to you existence. No, I'm saying, that's the, I'm that's saying the, based that's on, the, the basics. on the conventional parameters, I believe I exist. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So you believe that you exist, correct? Now, if you believe that you exist, don't you think it's natural to ask yourself, well, where did I come from? And why yeah, am I here? I asked, I asked that question. Right, so let, let me ask you this question. Did you create yourself? Um, in what sense? Did I create my persona? No, just you, your existence. No, my, okay. mom, my mom and dad did. Okay, you believe your mom and dad created you? Yes. Okay, so when you die, can they give your life back? According to the current Why state not? of uh, te technology, no. Why not? If you're saying that your parents gave you life, they're the life giver to you. When you die, why can't they bring your life back? Do you know what that shows you? Why would, but why would that even be a question? That's a question because it shows to you that it's not within the it's not within the capability of your parents to for you to be born because there's so many parents that goes through miscarriage. How can they, you... So how, you're saying that my parents didn't give me life? No, no. Yeah, your parents didn't give you life. It's a, what I'm saying to you is, it's a means of your existence. This is what I'm saying. So your parents didn't give you life in the first place. Because look, like I told you, if your parents gave you life in your, the first place... Your parents place, didn't give you life? No, my parents didn't give me life. The life who gave me is the Creator. The Creator gave me life. But the Creator created my parents That's as a means for my existence. That the messenger didn't give you the message. No, what I believe is, oh, we can move on to that, no problem. What I'm saying to you is, you you're, first... It's like a, you're creating kind of an unusual argumentation. Which is? Like the process of reproduction is what gives life. But how, okay, so do you believe that your parents ha was able to control your outcome? But what, I don't understand, what, what, what does the control, no. level of control have to do with it? Because it shows to you that your parents did not have the control in the first place for your existence because would how could without them Am would I you dependent on, uh, on their relationship hang on but your parents is dependent upon their parents so i'm not, so, arguing, I'm not arguing against that. exactly but so to say so, that my so, parents so, didn't give me life right kind of goes in the face of like okay the, the, uh, the basic see when you talk about natural inclination yes if you ask anyone here did your parents give you life okay who, I, I would imagine that the vast majority of people yeah. even the muslims here would agree okay well hang on hang on so no that's I, my natural inclination no i'm saying no i'm saying your parents is used as an agent for your existence but who look after you in your womb uh, in, in your mother's womb who gave you food and drink the very fact your mom your your, your mother could not it's even appropriate, so not no, 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 okay my parents my mom i'll use my example no, 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 my, my, no. my 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 mom my, you know how it works, it goes through the bloodstream and then the, right. the fetus, right? right? But my mom <laughs> couldn't feed me if there was no food in the first place. And my mom didn't create the food. My mom just cooked it. So where did the food come from? Where did the water come from? You wouldn't have the water if there was no rain. And where did the rain come from? And this is why we say to you, ultimately, the creator. There are the a natural processes that right. go on on Earth. Right, right. Do you know what I like to use? Create Good. The su sustaining factors and you know that I say, allow us to give life. Very good, very good. Now, do you know what so I call... You, you disagree yeah. when someone said, when someone disrespects their mum, you know you hear the old adage, when someone's like telling them off, you say, you say, your mother gave you life, why would you, why would you disrespect Oh no, we have, we have huge respect. We, in fact, we say after worshipping Allah, well, after worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after loving the messenger of Allah, our next love is, is our parents. But what, the reason so, I'm saying that so, is because it's, it's, 
it's generally accepted that our, our mothers give us life. No, no your mothers, mothers cannot give you life. That it's a boy or girl when you are in yeah. womb. Can they? You, they you, your mother, if she wants a baby girl, exactly, you would she be can't. A male. And if she wants a man, I don't think we're talking about gender. No, no, what, no, no. That's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you that our parents did not have the control of your outcome. If, for example, they want you to be a, a girl, I think they, they can't do it. Control over certain certain aspects of it. How? How? Just the fact that they. No, they just delivered it. They just delivered it, and this is why you have to question yourself. Where did your life come from? I, I think, because the thing I is, think it's a good, no, no. The thing is, you're unusual. talking. You're talking about the reproduction process. The natural process. You know what I like to call natural. Right. You know what I like to call natural process? Programming. Everything's programmed. But do you, so do you disagree that reproduction creates life? I'm not saying that. I'm saying reproduction is that part means. of the program. It's a means. It's a program that Unless was instigated by God. On a little bit of common ground. Do you agree or disagree that reproduction creates life? No. Reproduction doesn't create life. Reproduction process is a is a process. It's not a creation. Because who? Because where did the reproduction process come from? This is where you have to question yourself. Reproduction process is just a natural process, which I like to call programming. Now, let me ask you this question. How can things be programmed without a programmer, without any intelligence? That's your word. No, no, you told me. Yeah, but you're introducing that word to allow you to then segue onto this next question of yours. Okay, hang on. But, you're, but, yeah, but your parents didn't... I didn't call it a program. Okay, but I don't like to be explicit here, but there may be children, right? But, you know, genitals, right? Mm. Uh, did your did your did our parents created their own genitals for you to exist? No. You have to question yourself. Where did all this come from? You have to question this. It's not it's not a byproduct of randomness. There must be some sort of programming. There must be a natural process that somebody put into it. For example, you know I'm not sure if you do um, encoding, right? But you, the computer cannot be programmed unless somebody encoded the information. And we're talking about one cell that is more complex in terms of its information than the whole stack of libraries. And you're telling me that there's no, there's no intelligence? I, I don't claim to have an answer for like, the problem of um, abiogenesis. A, um, abiogenesis is a speculation, even in yeah, science. I don't, I, don't, I don't claim to have a view on that necessarily. Again, that's, okay. that's above my pay grade. However... <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> again, this is not me saying your claims are false or whatever. It's not. I'm not here to say God doesn't exist. I'm not. An, I'm not an atheist in the in the um, conventional sense. I'm an atheist only in the sense that I, I have a lack of belief, which some philosophers would argue. I have a lack is of belief atheist. too. Can I tell you? I have a lack of belief as well to a certain extent. You, you, I, 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 you I, have belief where I don't, what? and maybe I have belief where you don't. Let, let me explain to you, let me explain to you. I also have a lack of belief. I'm also an atheist to a certain extent, you know why? I think we're all agnostics to a certain extent. It's, it's allowed for you to have healthy skepticism, no problem. But unhealthy skepticism, that's where the problem is. Right? Sure. Okay? So, I, let me tell you one thing. I am also an atheist to a certain extent, you know why? I also reject the concept of Trinity. I don't accept that Jesus came as a man and as a God. I reject the Hindu gods, plethora of gods. I also reject the Greek gods fighting amongst each other, right? I reject all these gods, and this is the reason why. Oh, sorry. This is the reason why, in our pillar, the, the, the first pillar, which is Shahada, which is to declare your faith, we first make the negation, La ilaha. There's none worthy to be worshipped. We first make the negation. So me and you, we're together. I also reject the Trinity God. I also reject the Hindu gods. I also reject the Greek gods because, by definition, they cannot be God. How can, how can, for example, Jesus? How can he be God if he eats and drinks like us? Yeah. With all those, it doesn't all make those sense. Arguments, and again, I don't, I don't exactly. have any sympathy. Exactly. For the so, so me and you, we're already in the same boat. Now, where I'm telling you is where I make the positive affirmation, except Allah, and I've given you definition of Allah. That the definition of Allah is unlike what you heard of. What you're rejecting, you're not rejecting the existence of Allah. You're rejecting the existence of false gods. I'm with you, because when I give you the definition of Allah, you have no problem. Do you know why? It aligns with your natural inclination. It makes sense. No, I, that, didn't, I didn't agree with it per se. Uh, however, what no, I'm saying is what I, you, can, I can be wrong. No, what you're and, doing, yeah, what you're, sorry, sorry. What you're doing, you're playing devil's advocate, which you said, right? You're questioning about Allah's attributes. When I, so when I, right, when I offer challenges, they're not necessarily challenges that I've come up with myself. They're ones that I've heard. But I'm saying deep down, for me as an individual, sure. I'm, I'm not convinced. It's not, it's not that I'm choosing to be ignorant. I, I come to places like this. Of course, I'm, I'm not I, saying I, you're I'm ignorant. Always, no, 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 I'm not putting words in your mouth. But yeah. I, I try to expose myself to as much information as I can 
in the pursuit of the truth. But as much as you expose to other people's yeah, claims and arguments, expose you, yourself to, to expo misinformation. But you should also reflect about your own existence. You should reflect about yourself. This is what Allah tells in the Quran. Do they not contemplate about themselves? Allah says in the Quran, yandruna ilal ibli kayfa like, Have they not seen the way how the camels have been created? Look at the camel. Why do they have long eyelashes? Why don't we have long eyelashes? Do you know why they have long eyelashes? Because they live in the desert it, to trap the to trap the the sand dust. Mm. Because if they didn't have the long eyelashes, right? It's going to go into their eye. They're going to be blinded. Yeah. That means there must have been a design. There must have been some intelligence. If you see this building right so here, so you're, you're operating under. Are you saying that you're operating under the uh, observation belief that the camel was designed and that was it? The like, camel was designed. You could tell it's designed in, with a fit for purpose. On one occasion, a, a finished camel, the first camel was created and there were no like... Ultimately, Allah, ultimately Allah created everything that existed. Everything, including the camels, through including the process, us. Through process of, he, of he, evolution? No, I don't believe you. Uh, well, I, okay. You don't believe in evolution I, for humans, right? Yeah, I don't believe the evolution of humans, but I've got right. no problem accepting the animal evolution. I've got no problem with that. But ultimately, Allah, that, Allah subhanahu that wa ta'ala... That seems like a, like a more modern take. No, not necessarily. More modern understanding. I, I, I no, 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 I'm agnostic. I'm agnostic because I don't really care. I don't really care if animals evolve or not because it doesn't really take me outside the fold of Islam. Sure. What takes me outside the fold of Islam, if I start believing that we didn't come from Adam and Eve, we come from monkeys or we come from fish. That's where I'm taken out of the fold of Islam, right? So I don't affirm Darwinian and evolution. That's because of the claims that the Quran makes exactly, about creation. Exactly, exactly. But first of all, I'm not, even, I'm not even talking about religion. I'm just talking about the existence of the creator, so that it makes sense. Obviously, for me to be to be sincere, I would have to be open to changing my mind if compelling evidence. Exactly, itself, right? exactly, exactly. So how so how do you resolve that with, for example, the um, like the fossil records? Okay. Um, like the, the evidence that is claimed to represent the evolution of the human species. For okay. Example. How do you how do you deal with that? Okay. First of all, these fossil records and all of this, these are all based on assumption. Mm -hmm. This is all based on assumptions and evidence, right? Science, you I see... Hope it's based on evidence. Yeah, so but if you go by the scientific method, you're just extracting data. That's what you're doing. Doesn't, I mean, it if doesn't... They, doesn't if, they, if they dig out a fossil of a skull, which is remarkably similar to human, but not quite human, and then another one that's very similar to that, but slightly, like, slightly further removed from yeah. human, but clearly related to the... To but the, this is why it's called the a theory. So but this is why it's called a theory. Exactly. It's not well, a fact, it's a theory. Give us the definition of the scientific method, so we can uh, we can go happened? more. Yeah. Now, modern physics says everything is in a very symmetrical shape. This has been now uh, a modern physicist says if you look, everything is in a symmetrical shape. Yeah, that couldn't be by itself because Correct. how come everything is in so symmetrical? Exactly, and they just give the like number. Like what, for example? Like everything you say is uh, like a. If you go in deep inside the ocean, look at yourself, look at everything is in a symmetrical shape. A golden ratio. One over two. Everything proportional. One divided by 237. The mathematician even find out the numbers of that. In this, if you Google it, you will find one divided by 237. That is the symmetrical number. They gave it to it. Yeah. And, but uh, uh, we're just having a respect for discussion, man. You can do afterwards. You, know, you can do afterwards, man. Do you want to join the discussion? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> What's the discussion about? Yeah, but don't block the camera. No, no, no. We'll just listen and then if you... Sorry, Robin, man. Sorry. Carry on if you want, man. How about football? <laughs> How about football? Nah, we'll be nah. here all day. That's fine. No, there's a conversation. If you listen to it yeah. and then you pick up yeah, yeah. on the topic, the, no, if you feel like you have something to contribute, it's based. you're welcome to... Uh, it's just based on experimentation and observation. And observation. Yeah. So they didn't observe, uh, exactly. they didn't observe Darwin evolution. <laughs> so so the, the fossil record, you're just saying, you're saying what, you're saying what about it? But you weren't there. This is the whole point. This is why it's called theory. For example, the Big Bang Theory, you weren't there. We're just postulating evidences that we saw the red shift, that the, the galaxies are receding each other. And therefore, we make an assumption that if the galaxies are receding each other... Anybody who makes therefore, any claim about religion or about the what happened during the course of their religious... Yeah, the narrative yeah. within their religious tradition, yeah, yeah. in all likelihood, wasn't there. No, not necessarily, because science is induction. But my belief is based on deduction. That's okay. the difference. Exactly. Yeah. So this is science. No, this no, is. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the um, precepts of believing in a creator. I'm talking now. I'm just kind of trying to move the conversation yes. along yeah. to to a specific religion. So okay, but, but the events but, okay. that make up the the traditional narrative yeah. of any given religion. Yeah. 
now in the modern age, like all of these religions are somewhat ancient in origin. Okay. In terms of I can the, see, time, I can. the timing of the revelation. No problem. So no problem. So where you make the claim that you weren't there, i.e. the Big Bang, mm. the fossil record or whatever, mm. well, none of us were there in terms of the, the major events in mm. the origin stories of these religions. Either. Yeah. Okay. So how, how then do you apply that standard? There's a difference. My claim is based on certainty. Science is not certain. Because science is transitory, it changes over time. Whatever the evidence points towards, you go by that. So but but 100 years time, they may say to the universe is internal. So, when we talk, so that's part of the reason why I picked... Oh, what happened? Huh? Where are we going? No, 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 no. We want to look around. Right. Good night, take care. So, you see, when I talk about um, the, the, the fossil record, right. and you said it's just observation and theory, but how, I, I don't understand. Yet you're, it's observation because you're yeah. looking at the thing yeah. and you're determining that they're related because they're extremely similar. Okay. Look, why would you discount that? Do you know why I discount that? As it, sorry, sorry to interrupt Do you, know, you. Yeah. Over and above yeah. your what you're told to believe. Okay. I'm saying from a, just what is your rationale for for good for good rejecting question. It? Good question. My criteria is not science in the first place okay. because science doesn't give you ultimate truth. Science can only give you based on evidence and based on assumptions. It can never give you a certain fact. It can never give you. Because whatever the evidence they give you in 100 years time, it may backfire. They may, come, they may have other fossil evidences in 100 years time that may contradict the present claim. For example, I'll give you one example. I don't believe in the Big Bang. I don't believe specifically about the Big Bang. This is what science says. I don't really care what science has to say. I but don't, I'm not I don't think it gives any hard conclusions. To no, be honest, I love science. I love science, by the way, but I put science in proper perspective. Yeah. Right? I, because in philosophy of science, there's something called scientific realism and scientific instrumentalism. Mm -hmm. So scientific realism meaning that science is your objective reality. Science instrumentalism meaning that you're using, uh, the, you're using the scientific uh, theories as a useful tool for making predictions, but you're agnostic about it whether it's true or not. I adopt the scientific instrumentalism, not scientific realism. So, because my, my criteria of reality is Islam, not science. So you don't, you don't agree that there are some scientific principles that are proven to such an extent that they can be accepted as Can science? any scientist say that to you? So, for example, like with the um, principles of like the, the weak force, the strong force, um, electromagnetism and so on. Okay. These things, like they've been shut the book that's it those these are facts yeah, as in that's how they, that's how they're considered i'm not claiming to understand yeah them, yeah but i'm saying these are considered to be uh like conclusive they, they, they're considered that's, as see that's see, you, you, you 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 you're spot on science can never give you a conclusion that's the difference. I don't. I want to. I want answers that gives me certainty. Science doesn't give me certain. Like it doesn't give me certainty. It just gives you what evidence points towards. But it doesn't I mean, give even, you. It doesn't give you the facts. extent where you could make, like you could make life or death decisions based on the information that the study of these, like these three principles that I've just mentioned, give you. You could put your your life on it. That 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 the equations will be true. That. Um, you know, I'm not dismissing science, by the way. I'm, saying, just, I'm just putting science why, why in the proper you, perspective. What, with, with less certainty than your religious beliefs? No, exactly. We, the reason why I say this to you, because science is just a study of the natural phenomena. And we, and we believe that even in but the Quran... Sorry to interrupt. I'm, 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 uh, no I'm problem, sorry. See, like, with some of the principles, like the ones I've just mentioned... Yes, yes. ...where you say you have less certainty about those than your religious beliefs, despite the fact you can measure them, you can experiment and prove that they're true even now, you still reject them or you still regard them as a lower level of, of lower level of evidence correct correct and you have less confidence in them than your yes than, 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 than islam your beliefs, absolutely which in by the very by very definition correct. are absent in in what makes them knowledge exactly so that's what if i'm saying there is a yeah. Reason, can I say yeah 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 sure because sure sure what happened i can take and i understand you say there is a solid something and there is a religious belief how come you reconcile this a things? religious belief which yeah. at its very core that's a very is good occult. question it's yeah. hidden parts of it are intentionally yeah. hidden from you but thing is that okay. if i take okay. your one like a science one because that's the one you, because you said there's a solid ground on a science there's a religious belief so we have to take so but thing is that let's take the science one because there are now science has been divided into two there used to be a conventional physics all the 
time mm. you believe. And now quantum physics come up which completely negate that physics. One second. So now... Brother, I'm gonna, it's a nice discussion with him. Is it possible if I could pay Maghrib here? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. With the permit, yeah? Yes, Just yes, in 10 yes. minutes, yeah? Yeah, Zakla. 10 minutes. Exactly. Energy never comes with the mass, mass because where is that then, uh, the solar energy comes from? How the photon emits energy? There is no any mass over there. I, I understand what you're saying about like so, classical physics, and Newtonian modern, physics. So although, that, yeah. although it, 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 it falls is, apart on the, on the subatomic level, subatomic level, it describes yeah. Yeah. very well uh, things on the large so scale. Right? Do you believe? It describes, yeah. But it negates the convention. Exactly. So what he says, he says science is evolving. Evolving. It's evolving. Things New up, things coming up. Things Otherwise, you, we have to still stick with the conventional physics. I, I but the quantum saying. physics come, and quantum physics yeah. says that conventional physics is different. I exactly. what you're saying. Exactly. And I think, and maybe we'll get to that a bit later, but I actually think that within that explanation that you've just given yeah. is a certain amount of wisdom with which we should approach even the spiritual realm. But I, I agree with you. I agree with you. That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. You're right. Which is why we're not. Which is why we're not anti-scientists. We're not. We're not. We're not anti-science. We're just saying we're putting the science in the proper perspective. Which is like the brother here said very eloquent, eloquently. Right. It evolves. It evolves. Right. Because the certain evidence that you have right now, in hundred years' time, it may smack against your face. Like for example, do you Okay. Do you believe in the Big Bang? Do you believe in the Big Bang theory? Do I believe in the Big Bang? Yeah. Do you believe it happened, the Big Bang? I understand that scientists have made observations that lead them to model the universe in Ex such a way exactly. that what we see as reality started from a singularity or, or what they describe as a very yeah. small point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not, I, I wouldn't say necessarily that I believe it. I would say that I accept that it's a, a popular... That's it, theory. so I, I agree with you. That's what that's what I believe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, that's it. it. But I think there are other uh, scientific principles that are much more much stronger than the Big Bang. And I have no Bang. problem at all, which is why I say to you that nobody can confidently say to you that the Big Bang happened. But they can, that, but, because there's so many other models. But science, but Do you science understand? can give you confidence in other claims. It can never give you confidence. Because the thing science is there to like you say, it's just to experiment, it's just to you but know explore. You it, but but if it you doesn't give you an experiment time after time after time and it gives you the same result to the extent where you can now no need to experiment, you can just predict the So outcome. why is it still a theory? Do you know why it's still a but theory? There's a difference between a scientific theory and me coming up with a theory. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I can understand where you're coming from. Yeah. A scientific theory has to be supported by a huge amount of research and evidence. Absolutely. That, because from hypothesis to theory. Up with a theory yes. Um, about um, the Earth being flat is a completely like, different thing. I, I don't believe that, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So we have to differentiate between what is theory in the, in the realm of science and what is theory uh, just in terms of everyday thinking. Okay, so, so for something yeah. to qualify as a scientific theory, it needs to be supported by a huge amount of evidence. It needs to be supported by a huge amount of evidence, correct, which is where it's upgraded from hypothesis, uh, from hypothesis right? So hypothesis means that anyone can give you their explanation, but there's no evidence. Sure. But, but then it's upgraded to a theory, right? But then theory doesn't necessarily mean it's a fact. No, the, I agree. That's why I was the, careful to say that there, are, there exactly. are certain scientific principles That's it. In, that are resolved to such a level of certainty that we can... We can ah, consider them very good. So now you're going based on probability. This is what you're doing. So what's most likely, it happens. Mo what's, mo mo what's most likely not. And that's what evolution, this is what science does. I think that's a slightly si different... No, but si science, is, science is based on probability. It, 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 you put a prob probability machine, it's all based on probability. What's the likelihood? Because like you said, it's the, uh, if you experiment over and over again, it's most likely that it will be the same outcome. But it can never give, it can never give you certainty. This is what I'm saying to you. Whereas my belief, my criteria is based on reason and rationality. That's, that's more powerful because you come to a, to a certain conclusion rather than using the inductive argument that can never give you conclusion. I, I, I'm quite comfortable with many of the arguments supporting the existence of a creator. Like, again, I won't claim to believe necessarily, but I'm comfortable with them. Like, if it turns out to be true, it's not a problem for me. I'm not against it. And maybe this, but, but, this is but can I be honest with you, Cyrus? I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to be a devil's advocate. I want you to be sincerely honest with me, like deep inside. What is it that you're not convinced of? Because, as far as I know, I don't think you have a problem with with uh, with the existence of I think, Allah. I think people, I think people have this, this. 
I think you have an issue with religion, not the existence of a deity. No, I, said, I made that very clear. I don't have a problem with it. Brilliant. I, yeah, I have huge problems with, with religion. Brilliant. Okay, so let's, so let's now talk about religion. Let's talk about religion now, All right? right? Okay, we say Islam... It's, it's a bit more... It's a bit more... No, no, I, I think we're progressing. I think we're progressing, right? So Islam by definition means... Yeah, go on. Go on. Sorry, before we go on. I have lots of reasons for why I don't believe in God. But what's the contrary? Because well, what you're doing right now, you're just sitting on the fence. Yeah, you just said that something different. Well, I, I, now okay, so you, your religious tradition yeah. um, tells you that belief is a choice. Belief is a choice. Yes, it is. I, I, I don't agree with that. So I believe that I can make choices that influence my beliefs, but I, I feel strongly that belief occurs. No, I believe your belief You've been indoctrinated to make that choice. And I believe in that too. I've been, indoct I've been indoctrinated. Everyone has been indoctrinated to a certain extent. This is where I, re I really despise people who have hate against, you know, organized religions like the six world major religions, okay, Islam, Judah, as though they don't have a religion. Well, unfortunately, you do have a religion. Your religion could be fashion. Your religion could be money. Your religion could be science. Because religion, by definition, means you have a, it's a, it's a, a, a specific ideology that you go by in your life. So someone, may, their purpose of life may be just making money. That's your religion. So what I don't like is but people they, saying to me, but what, wait, sorry, what I don't like is when people come to theists like myself and say, oh, you've been brainwashed, you've been indoctrinated. Well, actually, you have been indo indoctrinated as well by society. Society gives you the, the barrier of what is beauty and what is not. That's the reason why a lot of girls, a lot of, a lot of women, they feel pressured because the society is defining what beauty is supposed to look like. And then you see many subcontinents. I come from Bangladesh, right? And India, he comes from Pakistan. There are many dark-skinned, dark-skinned individuals trying to do bleaching. Is that not a religion? That's a religion. You've been indoctrinated. I understand what you're saying, and I'm not saying that the, um, the environment in which we live, uh, the information to which we expose ourselves, yes, yes. doesn't influence our beliefs. Yes. Um, you think but then, you, but then you, but then you made the ultimate choice at the end. Okay, so so, I, so I things that. you call a religion, I mean, yeah. I can understand why you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think deep down, you can take two people and expose them to exactly the same things, but it doesn't guarantee that they'll both have the same beliefs at the end of it. I, absolutely, I agree so with you. So there is an innate... What I'm saying to you is, at the end of the day, we have to establish what's the truth and what's false. And that's what we're doing. So what I'm saying to you is this, I don't think you have a problem, I don't think you necessarily have any problem of accepting that there is this creator who is nothing like anything to his creation and who is absolute wise and all knowledgeable. I don't think you have a problem with that. I think the issue that you have is religion. And this is where I can tell you that Everything Islam you gives... Everything you just described yeah, yeah. exists in another religion. No, it doesn't. It does. And I'll tell you why. Because in Judaism, they believe in, this, they believe in the concept of one God only. But do you know what? They put deficiencies to God. First they, of all, they, they, yeah. first of all... Yeah. Um, historically speaking, again, uh, you may reject yeah, the, sure. the religious scriptures, sorry, the Jewish scriptures, yes. because you believe they're corrupted. Not only that, but... For a number of reasons. For a number of reasons. Also because you have a, a, a revelation in which you believe which supersedes that. Yes. Therefore yes. you reject that. Yes. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know what the instructions are, but you're... But do you know what's the Jewish concept of God? Do you know, do you know what they attribute God to, God with? They, they believe that God make that God regrets, God made mistakes. I, I, I mean, these are all deficiencies that we say God is we have perfect. To define what God is. Uh, that's it. So my definition. So, so the so the so the so Allah, His definition is unique to any other religion. Do you know why? Because Allah is free from imperfection. Allah is perfect at, at all times. You look at to the Jewish. Yes, they believe in one entity, this one God. But do you know what? They attribute this with deficiencies, which is why. In, in, uh, which is why in Islam we have something called Tawheed, which is the oneness of God and we understand Allah the way how we should single him out in three different ways. You have something called Tawheed al rububiyyah which is the single him out in his Lordship, meaning that he is the only sole provider and creator of everything. No one else except him. Then you have Tawheed al ubudiyah meaning you single him out in his worship, meaning you only worship him and not you don't associate partners with him. And you have Tawheed Asma wa Sifat, which is the first part, that we sing him out in his names and attributes, that his attributes and his names are unlike any of his creation. 
So when you look at Judaism, they break the third category of Tawhid Asma wa Sifat. Why? Because they attribute God with deficiency, that God is weak. For example, God make mistakes. Us human beings, we make mistakes. How can an all-powerful, all-knowledgeable God make mistakes? So even Judaism, they have deficiencies. And if you look at Trinity, they have deficiency. I, I think, I think that so I believe, I believe, sorry, I believe Islam is the only religion on the face of the earth that gives you pure monotheism. And this is why I invite you to actually read the Quran for yourself and understand who Allah really is. Allah is free from imperfection. Allah is independent. He's self-sufficient. When you can correct me from, or, or you can, you sure. can make, clarify it for me. Sure, sure, sure. So where there are attributes, there are some attributes where God is the most something. Yes. Yes. Okay. Does he have to be all something? Or is it enough for him to be most something? So, for example, it's just a, it's just a be... translation. Well, it's just a translation. I, I understand, but I think it's an important distinction. No, he's infinitely merciful. He's infinitely knowledgeable. You can't you can't quantify. Okay. So, well, my question is, is it enough for him to be the most of something, like the most powerful, or all powerful? Does it make a difference? Uh, it's just a matter of translation. It's just a matter of as long as as long okay if if, if no 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 forget about the translations I'm just saying speaking in English okay the meaning knowing the difference between the most powerful and all powerful okay what does the most powerful mean what how do you understand the term most powerful because I think we've all just I think what we're doing is I think we we're doing a bit of semantics because all powerful and well, most it's powerful not criticism, it's not, I know it's not criticism I I know. It, it's like it's my stepping stone to discussing another belief system which not only is monotheistic but it is the first example of a mon monotheistic religion that we have okay but how can you say christianity is a monotheistic religion they I, I'm, they, not, I'm not talking about christianity but, but that's what i'm saying which is why i say to you islam is the only pure monotheism and this is and i challenge you and i come here every sunday you come to me you study judaism christianity the way how they their concept of god is so different to our concept of god that they put deficiency and weakness to God. For example, Jesus came down as a man and eat and drinking and dying. He's yeah, been that's, killed by that's his own a very creation. Easy, that's a, it's a very I'm talking about Judaism. Even Judaism. I'm not about Judaism no, either. but that's what I'm saying to you. But I'm saying Judaism, to you. Judaism, if you if you take the, the Jewish scriptures yeah. um, at face value. Yes. And I agree that they've been corrupted in the sense that they've been changed. Okay. If you take them at face value, um, even Moses was not a monotheist in terms of how he speaks in terms of how he's depicted as speaking but you're going by the jewish scripture that's what i'm saying that's what that's yeah. why i'm already like uh, i'm starting off by saying i, I know you've considered yeah, yeah yeah but for example in one in one of his songs he says who um who O oh lord is like you amongst the gods okay oh no but oh no 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 there's a misunderstanding here okay there's a misunderstanding you see elohim does not necessarily mean that it's only referring to the ultimate god gods can also be included uh, can also include judges and angels is by language so in the in the in the um in the hebrew language right the jews they will be able to identify okay elohim is this referring to the creator or is elohim here referring to his creation for example if you read in exodus chapter 7 verse 1 it says that moses was sent as a god to pharaoh elohim that does not necessarily mean that jews say that moses is the creator no so this is by language so with all due respect, if you actually study the Jewish scripture, even Genesis 1.1, it says in the beginning God created heavens and earth. They will never tell you that Moses created heavens and the earth, even though in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, Moses could Elohim. But the Jews, they will be able to distinguish Elohim here refers to the creator. Elohim here refers to Moses. Okay, so, so this is based on language. Elohim, who is, the, who is like you amongst the Elohim? What would you, what would you say? Who, who is like you amongst the Elohim? Who, who is like you they amongst... They say, oh Elohim, who is like you amongst the Elohim? Right, so Elohim, so when he says, oh Elohim, he's referring to the Creator. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the same, in, in the completion of the same yeah, sentence, yeah, but I'm not, I'm, the same word... I'm not a Jew. So the, the, the Jew can't... Someone exegesis. No, no, but that's what I'm saying to you, which is... Even, saying they were monotheistic. He was monotheistic. In that context. We believe Musa alayhi salam. We believe in Moses. He was a pure monotheist. My understanding Absolutely. is that the very first example where God is, is written as speaking in the first person, um, as saying there is no other God yes. comes much later in the biblical tradition. But I don't, I don't go by the Bible. No, I understand, but 
as a, Ju as a... Judaism is not a polytheistic religion. They say it is monotheist, but they attribute the qualities of God with deficiency. That's the difference. No, in, I would argue that it's a it's a henotheistic or monolatrist religion, where either there is an absence of um, a clear statement that there are no, no other gods, which I think is henotheism, or monolatry, where they accept that there are other gods, but they also only take one for themselves. No, they, no, no, they don't. the God of Israel means, the, suggests to me, yeah. that there are, there's also a God of Canaan, there's also the God of Babylon. Exactly. And so, on. so, yeah, so Elohim could also, could either refer to the God of Israel or his creation. It all depends upon the context. So, what I say to you that Judaism is the closest religion to the Islamic concept of God. The closest, but it's not identical. The reason why I say this to you what because not. Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism. Yeah. Oh, okay. Zoroastrianism, they believe in Ahura Mazda, right? Ahura I Mazda argue, is the. Go on, I can go on. give an explanation. Uh, no, no, no. I'll tell you, I, I'll explain to you Zoroastrianism. You brought up Zoroastrianism. Yeah. Zoroastrianism believes in Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda. He is the ultimate creator. But do you know what they do? First, first, we have to, first we have to establish what is Zoroastrianism. Not, not just its precepts, but also which version of Zoroastrianism I'll, I'll, we're talking I'll about. Explain to you. Because, I'll explain to you. For example, if I, was, if I was talking to someone of a different Muslim sect, yep, yep, yep. and you were observing that conversation, and they were explaining to me what Tawheed was, mm. I, I'm sure you understand there are certain sects where you say, oh, but you're tributing. I, I, I agree, I agree. Yeah? I agree. So, I'm saying there are also sects of Zoroastrianism where absolutely they attribute partners. No, but However, I'm, no, but, the core, the core yeah. as in the teachings of Zarathustra, I, I, I reject that. So, but yeah, please. No, 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 no. So they believe in the concept of one God. Yes. I agree with that. But they, but they divide his attributes in separate entities. And this is, this, this divide. That's a heresy. No, that's, no, it's not heresy. It is. It's not. I, I, I've read the original, okay. the original um, hymns of Zarathustra. Okay. Sure. So he, he doesn't, he doesn't consider them entities. If I would, you could even go so far as to say Ahura Mazda itself is not an entity. I think that's a step too far because I think Zarathustra believed that Ahura Mazda was a being. Okay. But the those things which we know to be or which are regarded as the attribute. Yes. They're separate entities. Became they became ah. considered. They, they are actually See, that's the we, prototype. Exactly. For the angels. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's tradition. what I'm saying. So you're saying that angels emanate from Ahura Mazda. What this I'm is saying, so. No, this no, is no, I'm not. Saying this, that the heresy led to that misunderstanding. Okay, so okay, so what is the that concept? Was not, uh, that was not Z Zarathustra's intention. Okay, so what? So who is Ahura Mazda? So Ahura Mazda, as far as I'm aware, he is um, Ahura Mazda. The words. Ahura Mazda mean Lord Wisdom. Lord, yeah, yeah. Or the wise Lord. Yes. I prefer Lord Wisdom because I prefer more conceptual reading. Sure. So where um, wisdom itself is venerated okay. as opposed to a being who is the most wise. Does that make sense? So there's no attributes. So how do we so how can we identify your no, because where the attributes come okay. is that your wisdom uh, comes with it certain certain principles that you can use so it's like for example a sun rays that's how it is so ahura mazda is the sun i'm just using an analogy right, right. and the rays are just these attributes see that's no. the different yeah that's it no that's not what it is yeah so if you take ahura mazda in the conceptual sense then you are venerating wisdom it means that you you see wisdom as the ultimate truth as in the ultimate aim. Uh, uh, but hang on, hang on. But wisdom, wisdom is an attribute. It's not, uh, it's not a personification. Wisdom became, is an attribute. I, I, I'm saying in a certain reading, it right. became personified. That's exactly what I'm saying. So it, it, that, that's exactly what I'm saying, which is a deficiency. Because why does, why does Almighty God need to acquire attributes? That being said, no, 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 no. You, you're, you're saying attribute. I think you misunderstand the teachings of, Zor of Zoroastrianism. So these attributes, which which you refer to, which I said became the angels, they're not attributes, they are, they are mechanisms that, that we, are, we inherit. We are given these... these um, so that's anthropomorphism, concepts. that's anthropomorphism. Those concepts were anthropomorphized. Right, and I'll tell you why that's, that's, that's absolutely... I'll tell you why that's a deficiency. Because you're telling me that I cannot understand the attribute of God unless we have the attribute in the first place. So no, I you're, you're, I'm saying attribute is not my word. So what word would you use? So emanation. That's exactly. So that I use the example of the sun. That's how it is. The, it's like the sun, and the sun rays is just, is just emanating so from the sun. Wisdom, That's exactly. Wisdom gives you certain um, techniques or 
tools. But wisdom with it's which, yeah, okay, with sorry, which, sorry. No, I'm saying I'm saying that these tools come from wisdom. And they're given to you so that you can make the best choices in life to bring about the ideal existence. Okay, but are you saying the wisdom itself is is inherent with Ahura Mazda? I'm saying if you consider Ahura Mazda to be a separate being, to be a being, then those principles are, are given by Ahura Mazda to his creation. But is but is the wisdom is that always in, is that always inherent with Ahura Mazda? Yes. So Ahura it's not Mazda a, is wisdom. No, that's incorrect. It is the entirety of wisdom. No, no, no. That that's not correct. It is all knowing. That, that's not correct. Right, right. But okay, okay. Now you have perfect wisdom. You have to have perfect knowledge. Oh, okay. So are you going by divine simplicity? That's what divine simplicity is. Okay. Because what you're saying is, what you're saying is, you don't accept that they're all dependent upon each other's attributes. They're not mutually exclusive. Who's they? Like people who subscribe to divine simplicity. They're saying that, well, God cannot be all knowing if he's not all wise. But no, I'm saying, I'm saying in, um, in Zoroastrianism, Ahura Mazda, Lord Wisdom or the wise Lord, yes. his, like his, ult his ultimate, oh, first of all, I'm not a Zoroastrian, I'm just No, giving, no, absolutely, no problem, no problem. His primary attribute is his wisdom. But I'm saying, okay. It, that infers that he's all-knowing. He's all-wise. Yeah, that's that's divine simplicity. That, that that's divine simplicity. Okay. Because what you're saying is, what you're saying is, in order for him to be all knowledgeable, he has to be all wise. No, he is all wise, and therefore he is all knowledgeable. That, that's divine simplicity. So you so, 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 so no, right. no no you're saying you're saying that he cannot be all knowing unless he's all wise in the first place. What we I'm say. Saying, no, I'm saying that. He, him being all wise implies that he's all knowledgeable. No, not necessarily, because all wise, all wise doesn't necessarily mean I need knowledge. Why not? Because I can just go by experience. I don't need knowledge. But to have all wisdom, to be the source of wisdom. No, wisdom doesn't necessarily mean I need knowledge. No, because they mutually accept. Okay, wisdom, can you yes, have okay, can you have knowledge? Okay, can somebody can somebody possess knowledge without being wise? I yes. think so. Yeah, thank you. So this is what divine simplicity but can is. Can someone have perfect wisdom without all knowledge? Can somebody have perfect wisdom without all knowledge? Can somebody with perfect wisdom without knowledge? Wisdom independently, yes. Because why we? Because the fact is, what you're doing is you're using wisdom and knowledge as though they're intertwined. But there is, but there yeah, is. They are you, you certainly need some but, but knowledge. But you, but you acknowledge that. They're, but they're two different words. Yes, but they're not. But I'm they're not synonymous because all, knowledge and wisdom are not synonymous. Yeah, being all knowledgeable does not does not necessitate wisdom, right? But according to uh, your explanation, being, mm -hmm. that that necessitates that if he's all wise, he must be all knowing. Therefore, he's all knowing. That you just said seems, that. That seems like a logical progression. No, but that, that's divine simplicity because what you're saying is you're not acknowledging that he has more than one attribute. This is what divine this this is this is what divine simplicity is. You're simplifying God as though he has not that he has, he only has one attribute and nothing else. But God has many attributes, multiple attributes. For example, he's all knowing, he's all wise, he's all loving. Because you can then twist you can twist his attribute. All wise could also mean all powerful. All powerful could no. also mean yeah, anyone can twist it. No, but why would it why would a, a just God be all loving, for example? Okay, what is just okay, is justice necessarily mean you need to have love? I would say if you're wise, then you you ha you are just then you are just. No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, because it, all no, the no, of it all no, is I asked you uh, no, I asked you justice no, well, no. justice and love are they mutually exclusive? Not mutually exclusive, but I don't think How? I don't think they're necessary. Okay, if you, necess Okay, if so, okay, if I if, if I was facing a a, a a criminal charge, yeah? I did something wrong. I'm in the criminal court, yeah. magistrate court. Yeah. The judge, he doesn't love me. He's just there to make ju uh, to, He's just there to, to put justice. No, but uh, you, when you say mutually exclusive, you mean one is completely separate from the other in the t in, in the no, sense we that they we can't coexist. No, 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 no. They coexist, but they are different attributes. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So, but that's contrary but, no, but to. I'm saying, but, but one attribute can imply another. No, he doesn't. Why not? No, because. Because they meet, because the meaning of this one attribute is different to the other meaning. So, for example, otherwise you're saying they depend. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, otherwise, what you're saying is they depend upon they depend upon each other's attributes. If if God is all just, yeah, does that necessitate that He is the most merciful? Not my language, no. 
that's not how I believe. I believe God is all merciful, but he has another attribute, but they coexist. That's it. We don't, I don't say God is all merciful, therefore God is all just. Because what you're saying is that no, means... No, no, no. That, it's the other way around. Okay, it doesn't I'm matter. Saying, but no, because I'm saying one attribute can depend on another. No, no, depend. It that, that's versa. it. That's it. That's what you're saying. The word dependency isn't deficiency. Because why should God be dependent upon his attributes? He doesn't depend because on his attributes. With definitions of words. Words have meanings. No, but, so you can't. Yeah. So whereas you might believe that you can just. That doesn't sound like to me a perfect God. No, but because a perfection. You didn't say he was perfect. Okay, but, but I said that he's the only creator. That's all. Mon no, that's, no, all mon no, that's all monotheism no, implies. No, but Islam. No, but Islam doesn't only recognize he's the only creator. Islam recognizes no, Allah. About monotheism. Uh, but hang on, but I'm telling you. But what you're saying is the rationalism. What you're saying is is like a serious proposition to Islam, to the understanding of Allah. I'm what just I'm saying trying is a different understanding of the definition of monotheism. But, we, yeah. we're, only, we're only addressing monotheism at the moment because. In you, what, what you yeah. say is a what you say. I'm is not denying. I'm not. I'm not denying. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that the Rashid could be a monotheistic religion. What I'm saying is they have the qualities of that God has deficiency. Uh, That's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm saying that w despite the fact you claim that your understanding of God is without deficiency. Yeah. I'm saying, and maybe not on this in this particular conversation, but I'm saying m maybe I could demonstrate to you that that actually your that claim of yours is not entirely correct in practice. However, what I'm saying is an attribute being dependent on another attribute, why do you think that creates a deficiency in the God when he has both of them? Because dependency means you're reliant. No, no, depend dependency no. in terms of language. Okay, was, okay, so let's use the example of, okay, what was your, you said the w wisdom implies knowledge. Is, is that what you said? Yeah. I don't want to misconstrue your, yes. okay, fine. I'm not speaking for Zoroastrian. Right, so, so, are you, so, so the moment you say wisdom depends on knowledge no, no sorry implies. all wisdom implies knowledge yes then what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge because i'm saying all knowledge all knowledgeable does not imply all wise but i'm, I'm saying the other way that, around that, that's what i'm saying but i'm saying all wise <laughs> implies all knowledge no i think you're we've all just i think you're confusing yourself because oh, you, no no no, we've all, no, no, no maybe I, we just disagree no 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 because right at the beginning you said ahura mazda mean the lord wisdom correct yeah okay now what you're saying you're saying all wisdom implies all knowing this is what you it said it implies to me it implies that to right, me instinctively imp right implies the but then but then if if it's if it's implication why did you acknowledge that they they're two different words because, because why I'm not implying why can't you just thing. why can you just say he's just I'm all saying, wise but why wouldn't you why wouldn't you have more because all wise doesn't necessarily mean I need to have knowledge but well, why if you say all just why would you not why would you need to say all merciful when in the in the certain just, hang on hold on justice implies all just implies that where appropriate mercy will be shown no 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 this is what you say where appropriate what I'm saying to you justice does not necessitate it leads to love or mercy because if I if I face uh, in, in, in magistrate court right no, no, no. that way wait, wait, hang on, hang on. If, I if I face in the magistrate court right just because the judge is just that doesn't imply he loves me or that doesn't imply he's showing mercy no, he's, he's court, just implying court, justice love doesn't play a role in, in no but, in, in, in the no 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 what you said no no what you said is does. no no what you said is why can't you imply that him being just implies he has love that's in, what you're saying. So what, I'm giving an example. An all, it's not. Okay. In an all just entity, do you agree that where it's appropriate, it must show mercy? I to, don't know. To fulfill that, to fulfill that definition. I, I don't question Allah's. I don't question. Hang on. We're just wait, hang on. I don't question Allah's ontological reality. I don't question Allah's attribute. Okay. I just you, affirm. Now just, but but what what but let's, what let's you're put saying? Aside no no no. What no no no. I'm just saying, for, if a being is all just, does that mean he's all loving? No. Don't put, words, don't put words in my mouth. Hold okay. On. If a being is all just, right. he will by definition show mercy when appropriate. That's exactly what I'm saying to you. So no, 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 hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on, hang on. A judge does need to show mercy to show his justice. Where'd you get this from? I'm saying in your understanding about what an all just being is. No. Would you agree that when appropriate... But I don't believe in that... demonstrate its ju yeah. how no. just it is, it will show mercy when appropriate. But Cyrus, what, but Cyrus the, the situation that you are explaining to me it's not the situation that I agree anyway. It's not. It's not in that paradigm. Okay, but what I'm saying wanna, to you. I just want to establish that you're not. You're not playing devil's advocate, and that you're. That we. But I don't. Want, but I don't want you to play devil's. I want you to be sincerely honest with no, me. Like I'm if it may, I, I if it doesn't make sense to just say it doesn't make sense to you. It seems to me that you are. 
So I'm saying... What, me playing devil's advocate? Yeah, because you seem to be sidestepping... No, 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 no. What I'm no, what I'm saying to you is that you're saying that all just implies mercy. Yes. Okay. Now, I give you an example where I committed a crime. Yes. Now I'm facing in the court. The judge is there and he, and he establishes justice. Yes. He doesn't need to show mercy. He will, they, he will take into account factors that would justify mercy. Yes. No, he doesn't need to. There, there's clemency. There's, there's a, it's a very well-known um, jurisprudential pro, okay. Uh, principle. What, okay, what's the difference between just justice and mercy? And now you will be able I to... they're yeah. different. They can coexist. But what I'm saying Thank is, you. That's I'm what saying I'm saying. They can coexist, but also I'm saying for something to be all just, it is dependent on being no. able to show mercy when no. appropriate. No, because I just showed to you that all I think, just... I think you're worried that you're going no, to reveal a, no, a, a weakness. In, no, no, Cyrus. No, 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 no. I believe in your paradigm that's a weakness. Because God does not depend his attributes one above the other. No. God has multiple attributes that coexist at the same time. So he's all. So we say that he is um, that he's Allah so Tuif. That he's. Can he be merciful wait, without love? Wait, I, I'll give you. I'll give you one example. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He said one of his names and attributes is his Allah Tuif. That he is subtle, but his other attribute is um, is the retributor. Do you see? Yeah. So do you see? Do you see? Do you see? see so why? So why can't? Why can't you? Why can't you have a being that somebody who is one who is a retributor, but at the same time he is subtle. But there's a difference. I'm talking about where you say something is the most something or all something. So I'm saying you can be subtle and a retributor. Those, those can be parts, components of uh, your but, 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 but can you then say... But they don't... I wouldn't well, hang really on, depend on hang, each other, hang, no. That's but it, not, that's my belief. Not, no, but I'm saying there are some attributes that are codependent. No, no. I'm just giving my view. I, I, I know, I know. So I know, I know. I'm saying there are some... Um, attributes which are codependent, as in one implies the other, and there are some attributes which are completely mutually exclusive. For example, you cannot take retribution no. and be kind at the same time. So, or, or, unless you're speaking relatively, so I'm saying that's, that's fine. Now, for example, the for example the, uh, the 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 most common name, Allah and we mentioned this before we do any action. We say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, the All Merciful, the Most Merciful. Right now, Rahman. It just shows Allah's mercy, the fact that He's given us food and drink. But Allah's uh, love is different. Mm -hmm. You see, He can feed, He can feed a tyrant. He can give them wealth. He can give them, uh, you know, food and drink. But that doesn't mean He loves. But He loves the believers. You see. So, therefore, if you're telling me He's merciful, therefore it implies He's all love. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense because that's a deficiency. What we say as Muslims, part of the Aqidah, the Salaf, we, act, we, act, we recognize that Allah has multiple attributes. Allah has multiple attributes that coexist and we recognize each of their names. So for example, that Allah is well, Ar-Rahman, Allah is Ar-Rahim. Do you agree yeah. that there are some attributes which cannot coexist, as in simultaneously? No, in they're a, all simultaneous. No, they're all simultaneous. Because Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, existence, is always, He was always there. So therefore, all of his attributes so is he being was always all there. all merciful to all things at all times? As in... He yeah, can... Ch no, no, hang on. He's, he's all merciful in the sense he's infinitely merciful. We cannot quantify. But whether he chooses to show his mercy, that's up to him. No problem. I think we'll end there. I think we'll end there, man. Yeah, but yeah, sorry. But old. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sorry, it's a great, great pleasure to well, uh, speak to you. I we can continue. Yeah, and sure. I think maybe... I take a bit of time to yeah. open up sometimes yeah, yeah. and I would like to speak more about Zoroastrianism or my understanding Absolutely about it. Absolutely fine. Absolutely. I, I would be considered an outsider to Zoroastrians okay. in the sense, not only am I not a Zoroastrian, but even my interpretation of it is different. I see it more as a philosophical idea I agree. than a religion per se. But the reason for this is, sorry, I know you want to no, wrap up, no problem, no problem. is because written intrinsic in the teachings of Zarathustra is progressiveness. Okay. This is, so when you say attributes, actually one of, see this, these emanations, and I think I just use that word because, I, because I'm at a loss to find a more appropriate one, because the, emanation, the emanations are bestowed upon us according to these teachings. We use them to make decisions. So one of those, print, or we use them to achieve the ideal existence. One of those is the progressive mind. 
Okay. So where I reject the idea that Zoroastrianism is a religion per se is because... You say it's a philosophy? Yeah. Okay. And fair the, enough, fair and enough. Because I think um, progressivism is somewhat incompa incompatible with like, orthodox religion. I believe Islam is progressive as well. You'd be very surprised. But when you say progressive... You'd be very surprised because the legal, the ethics mm. and, the, and the jurisdictions and the way how 1400 years ago, how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, transformed a barbaric nation into the torchbearers to other nations. How he transformed in the span of 20 years, but 23 can the years. Itself the religion is perfect. Because so how, what, okay, let me give you one, okay, so let me give you one element before I go, right? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. No problem, no yeah. problem. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he lived in Mecca, right? And he was born and bred in Mecca in the year. He, he was born in the year 570 and he died in the year 632, if I'm not mistaken, right? He lived in a society where alcohol was rampant, right? The barrels of alcohol was released, right? This is how much drunkards they were. They were involved in prostitution. They were ignorant, right? They couldn't read or write, right? They had no culture. There was no, there's no richness in their, in their culture. The only thing they prided was their language and their poetry like for example we have graduation ceremony right you go for university and you get your parents and your your relatives and you take photos right for them their graduation ceremony is somebody who you know who became a poet right. okay that's the only thing that they hold on to think, the rest of it wait the rest of it right they had no ethics whatsoever no mm. ethics mm. whatsoever right the only thing they had was hospitality but at the same time they were very hostile people how prophet muhammad peace be upon him 1400 years ago able to eradicate alcoholism, able to eradicate gambling, able to eradicate interest, able to eradicate all the antisocial elements that today we're facing with a perfect legislation. And this is why if you go to the Harvard University, you know Harvard University, right? Before you go into the faculty of law, above is a quote from the Quran from Surah An nisa chapter 4, verse 135. It says, O you who believe, Stand firm as justice, as witnesses, even if it is against yourselves and your parents, be it they poor or rich. This was unheard of. How did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a man who was unlettered, you could neither read nor write, a man who did not go through the school system, a man who did not have any military training, able to lead his people to conquer the Byzantine and the Persian. And even Bob, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Barnaby Rogers, one of the Orientalists, he says the very fact that Islam, that the Arabs able to conquer the Sassanid Empire and majority parts of the Bezni Empire is equivalent of the Eskimos conquering Russia and America. This in itself is, for me, it's a, it's, it's a miracle because it's impossible. I, I have some theories about that. Yeah, they, sure. And they're just theories, yeah, not sure. in the scientific sense, but sure, sure, <laughs> like sure. just little, sure. like thought experiments. But. I guess uh, rather than go down the road I was going to go, I'll just sure. mirror, I'll mirror something that sure. you said. Um, and maybe just to support my compatriots who um, look up to the teachings of Zarathustra, okay. but who may not be, who may not be Zoroastrians per se, sure, sure. but who have, who hold, who consider his teachings to be of value. Um, Cyrus the Great, who yeah. conquered Babylon. Uh, okay. I believe it's 530 BC, okay. um, was considered to have taken with him the principles of Zoroastrianism okay. and began a process of dissemination of Zoroastrian ideas or Iranian ideas um, as uh, discussed by Sebastian Cote Pabon who wrote a paper called Iranian Thoughts in Jewish Eschatology. Yeah, yeah. Um, and where you say that there is a transcript um, of the famous saying by, by the Prophet. No, the, the, the Quran that we believe oh, sorry, revealed to the Prophet, yeah, I, I from Allah. Yeah, yeah. No um, problem. There is uh, an excerpt from the an artifact called the Cyrus Cylinder, okay. uh, which was found in, uh, in a site attributed to Babylon, yeah. um, which outlined a decree by Cyrus the Great yeah. outlawing slavery and um, beginning the repatriation of all captives. Okay. Most famously, the, the the Israelites who were held captive there, which sort of began the post-exilic yep, yep. um, era. Um, not only that, but Cyrus the Great is mentioned, named as the Messiah 
in, in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 45 verse 1, yes. Right. yes. Um, so I think it, for Iranians that's maybe a lesser known part of their history, because, well certainly in the West because the diaspora is not taught about their history at all, whereas we learn every day in secondary schools in this country about the Egyptians and the Romans yes. and so on. Yes. I think that that's a part of world history and Iranian history and Zoroastrian history that has been kind of obscured somewhat. So I think there's something to be learned both from... But you know the difference is, Islam me. makes the promise, in the Quran it makes the promise that Islam would prevail over all religions even if the disbelievers like it. And you see right now that Islam is spreading around the world. Right, this is a promise. I mean, th th this is a promise. And there's many, many criteria, there's many falsification tests that you can take upon yourself to disprove that the Quran is not from what we claim to be from. That, that is from said, Allah. And, and by the way, with Cyrus the Great. Yeah. Said of some, spread of something doesn't necessarily speak of it. But this is a promise. But how, yeah. Good point. I, I good think point. you probably agree atheism, atheism is okay. spreading like, a, you, you, like what you probably describe as a disease. Um, I wouldn't say atheism is really spreading, to be honest. Maybe at a very slow or maybe, rate. Or maybe atheists are coming out. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. It seems like a much bigger thing today no. than it atheism was for me is not, atheism for me is not. Atheism, in my personal opinion, you, I mean, I don't want you to take it personally. I, I, I don't think atheism is a rational state. I think atheism is more of a psychological state, in I, my I opinion. Think the but, conventional atheism of the, the yeah. positive statement that God does not exist, that is a, that's a very, very difficult position to, to defend. And I, 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 I yeah, exactly. I, I applaud you. I applaud so you for you, your honesty. Gonna, yeah, no, what I'm saying to you is this, yeah, that we're talking about. Like, if you were to rationalize this claim that a person makes 49 years ago, that he claims that Allah revealed to him that Islam will supersede over all religions, that, that is, rationally speaking at that time, it wouldn't make sense. Because they're tribes, they're, 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 they're Bedouins. They had, no, they had no advancement in technology, in, in military, like like the Persians and the Romans, and how did Islam? How I, I did think this promise? My theories about that we can. We can no, no, but you have to question yourself. How did Islam? How did this? There's a verse in the Quran in chapter 48 that Allah says that is that it is He who sent down. That Allah says that it is He who sent down with guidance and the religion of truth to supersede all other religions, to supersede all but other isn't isms, even religion. if the disbelievers. Even if the disbelievers wish so, uh, doesn't wish so. So look, here's this claim. We're talking about try, try and contextualize. Isn't that the claim wait, wait, of every no, religion? no, no. But I want you to contextualize the situation that the Prophet was in. I want you to contextualize that. We're talking about an Arabian Peninsula, Arab Jazirat al Arab. I, I wait, 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 wait. Just give me one second. One you're, second. You're, you're presenting a lot of hang on, hang on. This claim, okay. This claim, the Roman Empire can make it. It's possible. They have all the military expeditions. They have all their soldiers and armies. Right? We're talking about a man who's a shepherd. But they did. Wait, we're talking about a man as a shepherd. But it's a miraculous. This one, I'm telling you, they had no military training. Unless there's information that you're not privy to. Uh, wait, uh, now you're making speculation. If you can show me anywhere that the Prophet Sallam had military training but he and had he had military information from who? From one of his companions. Okay, he can use the worldly knowledge, but what about the, 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 the scalability? What about his achievements? Awesome. Was that even possible? Do we want to get, are we going to get into this? I, I think we can you, carry on you, next you week. Were going to respond, you were going to respond something about Cyrus the Great. Uh, I, okay, I'll respond by Cyrus the Great. There's some scholars, there's some difference of opinion, it's not confirmed. Yeah. Cyrus the Great could be Zulkarnain, mentioned the Quran and Surah the Quran. I think he's... Allah, think, Allah knows best. I Allah knows best. in the Quran much more than you, you realize. Yeah, yeah. Explicitly. Explicitly, yeah. By so, name. so I've got no problem. But if you, Cyrus but, but the Great, no, I'm just saying that. Look, if Zulkarnain was Cyrus the Great, I've got no problem too. He was a righteous king, a powerful king that Allah has given him power, and he sought for justice, and he punished the people who deserve to be punished. So I've got no problem. But the thing An is, example of that is in another in a another chapter in the Quran. I I think. Well, which chapter? It's, it's a it's a very. Um, um, alternative reading of another another two chapters where it describes um, his um, actions towards a group I, don't, I, don't I think, think you're talking about Surah Kahf no. Surah 18 Zulkarnain no. No. which by the way I know by the way I'm being very clear I'm not saying Zulkarnain is Cyrus the Great no, I'm not I'm making very clear with yeah, the cameras yeah, yeah, right yeah, I'm just saying it's a possibility yeah, Allah not, Allah knows best this yeah. is not conclusive yeah. right but even if there was Cyrus the Great 
does, is not really relevant to me because I have a scripture, the Quran, which can, which people tried to falsify and they couldn't. People tried to take, people took upon the claim, uh, people tried to challenge the claim that the Quran make that try and produce a surah like it. Many of the Arab poets, even the five greatest that's poets, a whole conversation exactly. Well. But 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 that's the I've thing. Got some, see, I've got some ideas. No problem. But we'll carry on. We'll carry on. We'll carry on, man. We'll carry on. But it's been a pleasure to speak to you, Cyrus, man. Thank you for uh, thank you for the time. No, no problem, man. If I offended you, I, I, I apologize. No, no, not at all. I oh, think man. that lots of things get said in the park. Yeah. And you have to have a brilliant, reasonably thick skin. <laughs> no problem, man. Yeah, yeah oh, I'm gonna pray. I've man. always enjoyed um, talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you too, man. You too, man. We, we should do it again sometime. Inshallah. And Inshallah. I can tell you some of my more controversial views okay. off, off camera sometimes. No problem. Right. No problem. Take care. Take care. Have a good evening.